Today I want to talk about making stick floats. It's quite easy to make stick floats. I was making them when I was about 13 or 14. All you need is some fairly thin balsa dowel, around about quarter inch balsa dowel, fairly hard balsa. Um, if you use very soft balsa, there's likely to be a weakness at the spigot between the stem and the body of the float. The body of the float is going to be this hard balsa and the stem can be one of several materials. If you can find some really hard, dense cane or even lignum, which is a very dense, heavy wood, then that's quite a good material. You've got to work it. You've got to put a taper on it. You may need to use a chisel or a Stanley knife and then sand it down. What I'm increasingly doing for stems is using uh, kids plastic paintbrush stems. These uh, paintbrushes come in um, cards with about a dozen brushes on and you can get them in the sort of pound shops or online on eBay, maybe two pounds or so with postage for a dozen brushes. You could even use the brush bits. You cut off the two inches at the top that tapers down to the brush and use the tapered stem to make a float. This is a float that's children's paintbrush stem with a balsa tip fairly sensitive takes I've got six number sixes on there a little bit more than that so it's probably the equivalent of about four number fours maybe slightly more nice sensitive float casts a dream these two floats have got very dense cane bases that were made with the old green garden sticks You've got to find the dense ones, that's the problem. The harder the wood is, the denser it is. But they they fish differently to the plastic ones. The great thing about the plastic ones is that they cast fantastically well, they're balanced. And the test of a real stick float is, if you rig it up on a fine line on a proper stick float rod, one of the sort of splice tip rods with a two pound line, you sh with no shot on it at all, just put it on with float rubbers, you should be able to do an overhead cast or an underhand cast and it should go quite a surprising way. You could actually cast these floats close on 20 yards with no shot on the line. Now that shows how well balanced it is. If the base is too heavy, it will just dive. If it's too light, it will just wobble, float all over the place. And because it's balanced, when you fish with it, it sits right, it cocks right, as the shop register on it. And if you ever make a float and it just doesn't cast right and it doesn't sit right and you just feel it's not fishing properly, then Ivan Marks had the solution for you. You snap it in half and start again. That's pretty drastic, but if it's a stick float that doesn't work properly, it's worse than useless. So make them right and they will work right. I mentioned there were other alternatives for stems. One is uh, alloy welding rod, which is 1.6 millimeter aluminium alloy. And the other is to get some, uh, some solid wire, which is either piano wire, not quite sure the gauge of that, fairly fine, probably about 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 millimeters. And that's heavier. Those type of sticks aren't casting sticks. They will sit right in the water when they're right, but they won't cast the same. The real weight in this plastic is what makes it cast well. As I've mentioned earlier in the series, the legendary stick float angler, John Dean, he could do a lot more than fish a stick float, made his own stick floats using just this method. And the plastic that the brushes are made of does vary a bit. There are different plastics the densities vary a little bit and those that were made commercially the John Dean sticks the Dave Thomas sticks that had plastic stems they're not all the same the original John Dean ones uh, which I've got quite a few of are absolutely fantastic and the plastic I've used on these floats because you've got the taper already there you don't have to work the plastic apart from build a spigot at the top just there where it joins the two and then you're away and you you can experiment with the length of the, the stem compared to the balsa this one's about 
the stem is about one and a half times longer than the balsa and you can make the, the balsa body more bulbous. It's easy not to make it thin enough, the balsa thin enough and you end up with a float that's much too big. Sometimes you'll see people describing stick floats, there's been a few forum things lately about making stick floats and people have tried to make their own or asked about making their own and people have said here's a video on making stick floats and they show you a float that's just a Norfolk reed float with no stem no nothing that's not a stick float never ever is it a stick float nor is it just a plain balsa float a plain balsa float is a balsa float it's called a balsa it's not a stick float don't confuse the two stick float is a specialized tool when they're made properly they are brilliant absolutely fantastic floats I'm going to show you making one uh, on a, an electric drill in my garage it's fairly easy it doesn't take very long at all the hard bit with this plastic is making the spigot because we can't the diameter of the plastic and the balsa are fairly similar the plastic is very slightly less than the balsa so we can't make a hole as big as the plastic into the balsa be no balsa left so we have to cut down the plastic to about a third of the diameter of the balsa and then we're done and doing that takes a lot of care with a, a either a Stanley knife or a craft knife and just carefully paring it away you can't sand this stuff either it doesn't like it it just comes off in little whiskers and fibers so uh, that's what you have to do and when you've got it right you just arrow dite it in and as you turn before you glue it in you've made the hole in the balsa as you turn it quite often it's not quite right it's slightly eccentric and you'll find there's a point where it lines up fairly straight this floats fairly straight it's not the best but it's fairly straight so there's no it's not a crooked float let's go and try and make a float here's a pack of those kids paint brushes take your time with the sanding I've only shown a little bit of it you don't want to watch five minutes of me sanding a piece of balsa start with fairly coarse paper this is aluminium oxide paper and then go on to something fairly fine and then carefully saw it off at the length you need try and saw it straight this one's a bit crooked there's the body then I've got a sharpened piece of hard cane to make a pilot hole try and get it fairly central and then a very sharp drill will enable you to make the hole for the spigot to fit into now cut the paintbrush handle to length with a Stanley knife this plastic isn't very nice to work can hacksaw this bit off and then pare down to make the spigot it's quite a laborious process I'm just showing me starting it off it does take quite a while be five to ten minutes it's a lot harder to work than say a piece of cane you can use a little tiny file to do it as well now working in that little drill to make the hole and again just do it with your fingers keep working until it's deep enough test it as you go still a way to go there yet here's the float ready for gluing started painting now it's had some varnish doing the white undercoat for the tip it needs another coat and a bit of sand in there and here's the finished float I've done it with acrylic paints which is why it's run onto the paper but uh, the floats basically there it needs some proper paint on it to make it a usable float
I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, there's more to come yet on stick floats, there's plenty of mileage here. Please click like and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to continue to build it up.